everybody welcome back to the pacific war channel where we cover the entire pacific war from 1937 all the way up to 1945 and i'm joined here today by my guest it's dave holland from walking the battlefield the guadalcanal how are you yeah i'm doing good craig um thanks again for um, having me on so it's a pleasure and honor and i'm doing well today in um, freezing australia which a lot of people don't realize and we were discussing beforehand in canberra yeah. seasons are reverse so it's freezing in August. <laughs> Topsy turvy. Canadian over here is in the biggest heat wave we've seen in a long time. And you're freezing over there in Australia. Crazy yeah. world. And uh, I think this is pretty much one of the most interesting episodes that will be done in the Pacific War. I don't think I've seen anybody on YouTube cover the, all the Medal of Honors, especially for uh, Coral Canal. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was, um, I've been doing a lot of research involving the Medal of Honors on Guadalcanal. For a long time and um, i'm just waiting to put some product out it took me as you know i think we previously discussed i lived in guadalcanal uh, for two years straight and then uh, total for three years on um, small trips then and there and one of my goals was to locate every land uh, medal of honor site it's a bit difficult locating the sea and air ones uh, there was a number of medal of honors uh, earned on guadalcanal the officially there's 22 yeah. um but and during my course of travels and, and walking and uh, a lot of research, uh, lots of research, um, I've located every one of the Land Medal of Honor sites. So I thought I would love to, to share this uh, experience and um, information that I've, I gathered. So it brings us to... Um, mention Page then is next. Yeah, so Mitchell Page, Mitchell Page interests his story. I mean, <clears throat> personally, of all the research I've done, the most amazing feat of any any one person on Medal of Honor, I think, in my opinion, is Mitchell Page on Guadalcanal. So Mitchell Page did hold a ridge by himself. Mitchell Page did fire a machine gun from the hip. He actually led a counterattack charge with a machine gun. Um, and I think, personally, he's overshadowed by Barcelona for a number of reasons. Um, so Page was in 2-7. And I mentioned before, they moved him away and put him up on the ridge, color ridge. Yeah. So I'm not a 25th and 26th. They moved him up there. Now, Page, Page had been in since, I think, 30, 1934 in the Marine Corps, 36, 36, I think. He was a he was an old Corps Marine. I mean, he'd been to China. He'd been around a bit. He was a Marine. Prefer he'd been a, a machine gunner for like 10 years. He was like you know, old Corps, old school. Well, not 10 years, he's been a machine gunner for a number. I think he, I think he might have come in 34. He's, he's got a great book. It's called, um, I got it here, A Marine Named Mitch. Hmm. You know, uh, was he in Shanghai when he was in China? I don't know. know. If you ever see this, get this book here. I'm probably glare. Okay. It's called A Marine Named Mitch. Hmm. And that's his, his, his autobiography. I have to have a read. He's definitely in China. And he learned how to, he learned, and, you know, Learn how the Chinese, um, or sorry, how the Japanese, he could recognize the Japanese language and things like that, and in, in, in some of their their ways. And he um, he picked him up one night, one the night of the he earned his medal. No, sorry, but he um, he was pretty innovative. I mean, he was Serbian Serbian descent. Him and a, a Marine officer had their heavy machine guns. They wanted to make them lighter and fire faster. So what they did with their boats, they cut holes in their boats to make them lighter. And they had rapid fire machine, rapid rapid fire head machine guns. They were they were known for their little innovative things, and he had a well well trained uh, machine gun platoon. So him is um paid in his um, rapid fire guns. So they moved him in um, the day before up on that ridge, and he said when they moved him in, and if you if you go to my Mitchell Page video, they basically put his guns on a knoll, kind of out in front of the whole line. He had two infantry companies on support, but he was on a knoll. So he had to put his, his guns in at night. He said the place, and he said, I reached my hand out and I could feel like a, a, a sheer drop off. And if you go to that location today, you see a sheer drop off. And, and then the Japanese tried to attack that night. He could hear him. He said, I recognize that's uh, their voices. He just, I recognize them from China. And Mitchell Page was like an all, all star, all Marine baseball pitcher. You know, the guy that throws the ball. 
a bowler for any of my Australian and English audiences in cricket. Um, but Page got frustrated because he had his sle long sleeves. He couldn't throw as good because he was laying on the ground. So he said, we just threw a grenade and we hear him screaming and we knew they were trying to infiltrate us. So the next day, he said it took him two hours. He took his knife and he cut his sleeves out of his, his shirt <laughs> so he could throw throw a grenade faster. And um, I actually seen a, I think there's a drawing by one of the Marine historians and it shows Paige running down. I'm going to send to He's running down the hill. I think his sleeves are cut out. <clears throat> there's one, there's one, there's a painting of him with his sleeves cut out. His page only died in about 2003. So uh, yeah. wow. one of my friends was there with him when he revisited Guadalcanal a couple of times and walked him through things. So, and he's on a, he's been on documentaries telling his story. So it was quite a good story. And he was a real big advocate later in years about um, fake Medal of Honors going after the people who said they had fake Medal of Honors. He, he was really, as you can imagine, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. went after those guys. But Page, he set his guns up. Once again, he had, he had a number of machine guns like Barcelona. He had um, four heavy machine guns. They set them up. So when the Japanese attacked, um, the hit page is is no quite hard. Um, a, a number of his, his crews was killed and wounded, and they beat back the first Japanese attack. So the Japanese attacked again, and they overran his machine guns and just left Page basically by himself with another guy. And he, he got his wounded out, and Page was firing the machine guns. And at one stage, Page was running back and forth from machine gun to machine gun, trying to keep up the fire. There's no one other Marines around him. Um, Company F was to his, his left flank. They started moving back. He got so mad at them, he grabbed a rifle and started firing at them because he was so pissed off, he said. And he, 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 he remained there, still firing his guns. He managed to get uh, a couple of other, managed to get another gun and a couple other Marines from another company. He ran and got them. So they're there and all firing. And at one stage, the Japanese had infiltrated behind him, and you can see it when you go there. It's hard to describe. And um, where the battalion command post was. So Page turned his gun around. He could see him on one side of the hill, and he started firing at him. And, and, and the Marines in the command post thought the Japanese had killed Page and all his men was using the, the uh, machine guns against them because the rounds were coming over their head. Hmm. The next day, they found a number of those Japanese with bullet holes in their, in their back of the legs and in their heels and their bottom of their feet when they were laying on the hill and Page is shooting at them and hit them in, hit them in grazing fire. <clears throat> and at one stage, Page was by himself on that knoll and all the Japanese fire was coming at him because he was the only active machine gun still firing. So obviously <clears throat> in a firefight like that, you want to take out the rapid fire machine gun, suppress their fire. <clears throat> that's the way you do it. So they was getting attention of all the fire. Machine guns generally get attention of, of enemy fire. So he's firing away, firing away the best he can. Bullets, bullets are nicking him too. Um, and during all this, he's trying to get reinforcements. He's got a few. He's he's defeated the guys behind him. Um, and then Major Cooley, which is the um acting battalion commander, led a counterattack with some of his um, headquarters staff, uh, some of the cooks and clerks and all that. And they, they, about 25 guys started pushing over the hill. Um, at one stage, right, right before that, at one stage, one of the, the Marine machine guns were unmanned. And it was a race. He seen the Japanese looking at it, and he seen it, and they both started running to it. He managed to get to the gun before the Japanese and swing around and kill the Japanese. Wow. And if you ever... Just Google Mitchell Page on the YouTube or something. He tells a story about there was a Japanese Nambu machine gunner shooting at him, and he's trying to pinpoint him. We got him like a machine gun fight. He says, I'm firing at him, and then at one stage I raised up, and I just felt like, he says, like a, a whoosh underneath my chin. He said that was the 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 burst of bullets, that if I'd been down, they would have got me in the head. It just I had to raise up right time, and it just went straight underneath me. Yeah. It's amazing to hear his story. And then... When when the Major Cooley was a counterattack on the Marines, he's seen it. He yells over to his right for the G Company Marines, follow me. He picks the machine gun up, cradles it in arms, leads to, and it's a steep hill, he leads to the counterattack down the hill carrying it, carrying his heavy machine gun, probably about 40, 50 pounds, a dead weight, and he's firing it. 
And he yells out something. He's some but he yells out something in Japanese because he knew a few Japanese words. Basically, says "stand up" or something like that, or "let's go." He says another one popped up out of the bush. He says, and I start shooting at him. He says, one Japanese officer come at me with his sword, and he says, I, you know, he got within five or six uh, yards from me before he could cut him down with a machine gun. And then once they knocked those Japanese out, then the Japanese attack was over. And they stopped at the bottom of the hill. And he said, look, he had a, a giant blister from his uh, wrist to his top of his shoulder with his cradle like machine gun. Because he got some, one of the corpsmen had to come and put this special uh, uh, salve on it. Yeah, if you ever get that book, it's a great book to read. Great book to read. Because at one stage, they were going to, they were going to shoot a Marine captain if he came back the next day. Because he was there the day before with field glasses, looking at Japanese. He said, you know, don't do that. Don't do that. And he basically told him, you know, leave me alone i know what i'm doing then he walks away then some japanese mortars ran and killed one of his friends and he said that if that captain ever showed back up he wouldn't you know he probably wouldn't leave <laughs> and um but yeah page now why was page not as well known okay there's i think a couple of number of reasons page received a battlefield commission for this came a lieutenant he was a a married man by the time but an older fellow received a battlefield commission mm-hmm his Medal of Honor was one day later than Barcelona. When they went back to um, Australia, Barcelona's the only enlisted Marine there, the only enlisted single Marine there. Well, great poster for war bonds. Yeah. I think that was the reason why he was overshadowed because Page would have made good, good war bonds, man. I'm not saying, I'm not comparing, you know, both of them. Both of them, don't get me wrong, more than equal and did amazing feats. But the more you research in the page, and it's backed by a lot of, you know, he, he did some quite a, he did hold a ridge by himself. Um, Mitchell Page did. So, yeah, if you go into my video there about Mitchell Page, you'll see the the area where he earned it. And you can see how that no, he's so far in front of the line mm-hmm. with no support. And it's just, it's quite amazing what he had to do. The land was. Uh, I actually was wondering, um, because the way that this will probably come out, uh, this will be a one piece for for my podcast immediately, but I'm going to try and do, like you said, everything that you've given me, make the visuals and cut it up in the episodes. But if you could just tell uh, my audience, you know, just a bit about your channel and why they should check you out. Oh, yeah, I have, um, <clears throat> I have a YouTube channel called uh, Go Out of Canal, Walk in a Battlefield. Initially, I started up uh, where I've, I've basically walked these sites and had my two-year deployment there. I wanted to research and, and drill down on all the stuff I read about Guadalcanal. You know, one, I wanted to check the facts, and plus I wanted to get on um, areas which is kind of off the grid that most people don't go to, especially if you do the the, the tours there, the week-long tours. They'll go to the main points, and I've made it for them, and also mainly I made it for the people who never get a chance to go to Guadalcanal. Um so they can experience something. And also to capture what Guadalcanal looks like in well, when I was filming it from 2018 to 2020. Um, due to COVID and a few other things, uh, I no longer am due to work. I'm, I'm not at Guadalcanal. I'm hoping to go back maybe later this year and definitely next year and, and do some more on the ground filming. Now, in the meantime, I've, I've started interviewing other people about Guadalcanal. I mean, next week I'm doing a, um, for the anniversary, the Battle of Savile Island which is a naval aspect because I cover mainly the land and the three-dimensional Guadalcanal campaign is, is unreal with the air, land, and sea. Yeah. Um, I've got a, a guest, uh, Jeff Ballard, he's appearing to talk about the, the naval aspects and, and on the anniversary of the Battle of Savo Island, which is the worst defeat in U.S. naval history. Um, yeah, it was so we'll be discussing that. Oh, yeah. And then I also do, you know, a number of other videos i've done you know the getchy patrol i've done uh, chesty puller being wounded um i've just got, I've got one upcoming the u.s army role on guadalcanal i've got the 164 so i'm focusing <coughs> excuse me i'm focusing on until i can get back on the ground filming i'm focusing so but my videos i cover it's like i'm giving you a tour when i'm walking there mm-hmm. it's like me and you i'm giving you a one-on-one tour um my videos don't have a lot of uh, whistles and bells so to speak to it you know, I call it pure history. Someone, one of my viewers said, this is pure history with no frills. I'm like, yeah, okay. Because when I filmed it, I filmed it on an iPhone 7. Yeah. You know, I edited it on an iPhone 7, and I uploaded it on Solomon Island Internet. 
So it was just, it's, 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 you know, it's a miracle it even it got put up. Hey, it's also, having a joint, oh yeah, I have on a, a joining Facebook site. It's called same thing, walking uh, Guadalcanal, walking a battlefield on Facebook, and I update that every two or three days. And I try to include things in there that's never been seen before you in relation to, to Guadalcanal. You yes, yeah, so fresh material. You you've found new material about Guadalcanal. In all honesty, if people were to ask who are some of the experts on the actions of Guadalcanal, I think you could be argued to be one of them now. Um, no, yeah, I'm one of the supreme geeks, I guess you could say. There's a, there's a club of nerds, Guadalcanal nerds. There's a few of us. So, yeah, we, we bounce stuff amongst ourselves. Peter Flavin's in Australia, too. He's like one of the best then and now photo guys. I don't know how many trips he's made. Yeah. It's but yeah, that's the, my two channels. Yeah. And hopefully, I'll, I'll get some fresh um, tour tour stuff there. It's been a real yeah. honor to talk to you again. I stress my audience, please go check out his stuff. You will not find anything like your channel. Your channel is extremely original. It's one of the most interesting channels when it comes to this kind of history on the Pacific War. I can't think of anybody else who's doing anything like you. And uh, what can I say? I hope everyone checks you out.